All right. Hello, it's Sarah. I'm back. We still have a little work to do on this guy, and it's taken a lot longer than I thought. I, I don't know. I don't like to post these long hour videos all the time, but it is real time. I could probably cut it down. Um, anyway, so let's get started. We need to finish the pumpkin, and I want to highlight now because we did all the shading. And we're going to use tangerine. That's what I'm using anyway. And she said to um, float it. So it says, and then we're going to dry brush it. But first we're going to float it, oops, on the left side. So on the opposite side of each of the sections. My lid just went somewhere. Oh, here it is. And um, I'm going to use, I'm going to stick with that half inch. I'm liking this half inch Joe Sonia angle. I have fresh water, nice fresh, uh, everything's clean. I'm just starting out fresh today. And I'm side loading the way I always do, blending the color into the bristles. And I'm just going to start at an angle a little bit and push the color. And then I'm going to pivot. Let's see if you can see that. I don't want to come in too far because I noticed some parts of the video that I just uploaded. I come out of the shot and, you know, it happens. What can I tell you? Um, I like it not to happen, but I need to be more careful. Um, I'm trying not to get it across that line. Let me grab my mop brush and just kind of soften the areas that kind of get into the shading. Like there's just a water line here. I'm just going to soften it out. There you go. Um, and you, you can come back and do this as many times as you want to get it to be as bright as you want or, you know, but um, I think I'm going to do it down both sides of this segment. So I start with my brush on its on the chisel and then I'm going to pivot and try to keep it up against that line. And then I'll pivot back and stick the water up against the line there. I'm going to turn my guy around. the same thing to the other side. I just picked up so much paint, you guys. So I have to leave it on my palette. So see, when I corner load, I really, I jam it. <laughs> I go too hard. And then I have to leave all the paint here. But then I can load my brush from the runway. So I'm going to go down the side here. See how much paint, though? I like it dark, but sometimes... I have to reload my whole brush and I went right into the shading so I'm just gonna that's good I'm reloading my I'm just gonna rinse my brush and then I'll reload it from this runway right here like I'll just pick up this paint right here go down start again on an angle oops I went right into the shading area The surface is a little bumpy. I probably could have sh um, sanded it after base coating, just super fine. And I went over the line a little, so I'm just going to take my Q-tip as I do and just kind of take it off this side here, the shading side. But that looks nice and bright. We're going to dry brush too, so I'm excited. It's going to be it's going to brighten up a lot. And then I'm going to go both sides. I'm just going to go over these buttons. Just act like they're not there because um, I just got carried away with my base coating. And I will uh, finish those once we're done the whole pumpkin. So let's go with... I probably should have highlighted first. Because then I could have just pulled the shading right on top of the highlighting. But I don't want to put the highlighting on top of the shading. I'm just fading it, fading it out at the top there a little. Okay. 
and go this way. So in order to make the video shorter, I could just do half of the project. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. I don't know what to do about it. Just on the pivot, just because I don't I want it to be water. That was a good one. I managed to keep that right on the line. I'm just pulling the color out a little bit. We're going to do some dry brushing, so it'll be great. I'm going to go down this side again because I didn't really put a lot of color there. I want to really walk it out a little further. I finished the... I'm pretty sure this is done. Let me show you what I did. I ended up putting the dots back on there like because I had floated and shaded over them and then I shaded each one and highlighted each one and then I put a little highlight color along the edge of the um, ruffle as well just because I thought it I don't know it needed to be cleaned up the line it made it look sharper so that's all I did there I think I finished the tail um, I ended up highlighting all the white areas and um, yeah that's all I did on that and that's that so let's see I think we're dry brushing it says dress the brush blah, blah, blah. highlight left side of the section okay pat to blend dry brush the pumpkin section with cad yellow hue so now we're going much lighter with some yellow and we're gonna dry brush it and this is fun for me because I'm I don't do it very often so when I get to do it, I don't know, I just get happy about it. So let's grab, I'm going to grab, this is a half inch, I think, let's see. I could probably go smaller, but I think I'm good. Now let's look at the picture, and I want to see how she did it. So she kind of sticks to the more, the center area of the pumpkin as well. So just in each area here, I'm going to go right in the middle, so I'll go right over the buttons. So I'm, that's where I'm going to go anyway. So, to load my brush, there's a little black. Are you a bug? No, I don't think it's a bug. Um, just going to take the tip. This hasn't been put in water. It's a dry brush, literally. So I'm going to pull some paint out of the puddle and get it on both sides of the bristles. This is the Lunar Blender. You can get these at Michael's. Although, if you go to my Michaels, maybe not, because I think I've bought pretty much all of them. And then I blended it in, and now I'm going to take, let me get a nice brand new dry paper towel, piece of paper towel anyway. And then I'm just going to get the wet paint off there so that there's still paint on the brush. And let's see how this goes. I'm going to stick towards the highlighted side more, so towards where we just put that float. And maybe the, the piece is a little wet in some areas from that, but I can see that. Oh yeah, you can see it. Um, I want a little more because that's how I roll. I like things darker than light, and I'm just loading my brush like that, and then I'm going to wipe it off. And let's go down these two sides. And I'm just kind of using the brush, the side of the bristles. I'm not using the tips of the bristles. And you're just kind of doing little circles almost, scrubbing, it's like a scrubbing action. And I think I could do it more on the tip. Here I go, I'm more on the tip. And I can, I'm going to take a Holly Haney class where I'm going to go on her YouTube channel and I'm going to see how she uses these brushes because this is her go-to for um, dry brushing. But that definitely brightened them up, didn't it? All right, let's do the center. 
I'm just going to try to keep it like right in the center area. I'm going right over the blue, purple, and pink. Because it'd be too hard to go around them. But I am going to shade around them when uh, I'll show you the picture because she definitely says to shade around the buttons. I just love the look of dry brushing. I really do. I think that really brightened them up a lot. go up. It really did. It brightened it up a lot. So yeah, so she's going to have us, oh, it's not even looking like too much, but she has you shading around the buttons. I'll may, I may fit, just do it on the bottom. All right. I think I'm going to rinse my brush. I think I done good on that. Um, yeah, I kind of dry brushed on his nose a little. I think it might, I mean, it's pretty much done up there. But that looks good. I'm putting it in water. It's done. Um, it says, repeat the process for each pumpkin section. The middle section of the pumpkin has the shading on the top and bottom and around the three buttons. Okay. So we're good. So we're going to do the buttons again. Now, because pretty much we're done everything. I think I've already... The way she has the directions written, it's the hat, ruffle, buttons, and bow. Because all those things, the hat, the ruffle, and then the spiders, buttons, and bows are the same colors. So she's just telling you to um, <coughs> highlight shade with the colors that you, know, you do for the same thing, for the other thing. So let's see. The tail. Let's see. Float the scallops. Oh, you know what else we have to do? Dot under the hat with cad yellow hue. Um, you know what? I might as well. I used up all the paint. But I was going to do white, but it has a little... Um, I just figure I can do that and they'll dry. Right um, above... I'm sorry, below the rim of his hat. There's little dots. So I am. I'm going to do them in the yellow. I guess she just pulls all the colors together. I'm putting out a little bit of purple, which I used lavender. I used Indian turquoise for the blue. And then this is the, um, I think it's antique mauve. So just to um, repaint those buttons. Where's my antique mauve? And I'll come back when I'm done. Uh, painting these so that we can continue on because that'll take up far less time. Okay, so I baste in those buttons again and we're going to put the dip dots on our little hat here. You know, I wonder, like she doesn't say any highlighting. I could just dry brush down the middle a little bit of white. Anyway, I'm going to go with like a little bit of a bigger dot and this is the cad yellow hue, she said. And I'm going to just start uh, I'll start in the middle. I'm just making it like right um, on the edge of the brim of the hat type thing. So it's kind of like maybe little dangles. I don't know. I'm going to put one right there too. He's, he's a little pretend cat. He's not real. Oh, I'm getting a little close on this side. Trying to make more space between them. Good enough. That looks cute. I'm telling you, all the little details make the difference. Okay. And then I put out this color Sonoma Wine. I want to shade around the buttons before I continue with them. So I'm going to grab my um, maybe a little bit smaller angle brush. Let's go with this one. This is the three quarter inch ang angle. Three quarter inch. 3 eighths inch, 3 eighths inch, a little smaller. It just helps me not go too big and 
I need that. Okay. And I still picked up a whole bunch of paint, but that's okay. It's going to look great because we're going to float. The little flower petals are floated around the buttons. So we need this behind the, uh-oh. Oh, I thought I stuck my finger in the dip dots. Be careful. Don't do that. If you do, it happens to everyone. We have all, I have to say, I'll bet you, odds are everyone's done it once or twice. So just a little shading like that. Sonoma Wine. Yeah, I think that was the color we used. Um, when I do the little petals around the flower buttons, they're going to pop because of this. I'm really loving these turquoise, this turquoise color that she's been using. This one is just called Indian Turquoise, but the other one that I used for the um, the big pumpkin and the uh, the bat, it was called just Turquoise. I got it on the button. I'll just try to get it off the button. It's all right if it got. It just makes it not as round. Okay. That'll be fine, because I'm going to put the um, petals there. So again, just try to go. Just keep moving. Move the piece. And I just keep reaching back over and getting a little more paint, because there's water and paint in my little runway there. And that's it. I'm going to let that dry. And... I got to look at something because the, the buttons are going to be, I need the shading colors for each of these colors. I think the Sonoma Wine will be fine for the, yes, yeah, Sonoma Wine for that, but I need for the blue, it was this, uh, the Victorian blue, and for the purple, I think it's Diapsazine purple, so I'm going to put that out, and then we're going to shade the, the buttons to look like buttons. I think I have a little, yeah. So right here, you can see it real good. I'm just going to go around. Let's see. It looks like... Hmm. She doesn't exactly say where to do it. Let's see. It just says... Float the scallops around the buttons with white, but she doesn't really say... Um, it just tells you the colors, which is fine. Oh, that's the wrong one. I need diops, this one. Um, it also looks like I, I painted my little spider legs blue. I put blue stripes instead of um, white stripes, which I guess they were just shaded with the blue, but I like them. I think he's cute blue, so I'm not changing that because I would have changed it by now. All right, so I'm going to go on to the buttons. I'm going to go with my smaller angle brush, not that small, because we're going to float in. Let's do the blue one. Little too much water on my brush. What I want to do is create a circle within a circle, and I'm going to go around just like we did the we went around the button now I'm going around an imaginary circle you can draw it in I'll do that with the next one I do so that you can see what I'm doing so that's it so it made a little so I would just take my little um <coughs> my <coughs> chalk pencil well I only have a blue chalk pencil right now and just make a little circle that is so crooked. I'm better off doing it without a line. And then you can see where you're going better. See, chalk comes off, so you don't have to worry. It comes right off with water. Oops, I need a different color. Go into that diapsazine purple. And I 
oops, again, I'm going to put my hand in those dip dots. Dip dots are, it's always good to do your dip dots last. I mean, you can see it a little. I might just use this color, um, the Sonoma Wine, on the purple too. I think it'll make it show up better. So I have the color on the brush facing the inside of the button and that way it leaves the center part but I think I'm going to float on there too. So they look like they have double circles right now. Let me look at the picture again. Looks like she highlighted it too. But I think I'm going to do a little shading on the bottom of both of those as well. It looks like the blue I can come back and just put a little blue here. And I'll do that with the other ones as well. And I could have, I'm just going to stick with that purple color. You can always outline this stuff too if you want it to really pop. And I think on hers she did. She used, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll read it in a little bit, but um, I'm going to go in, I'm going to float those little uh, petals, flower petals with white. So I could go in and just make with my, with my um, chalk pencil the lines, but I think I'm just going to wing it, you guys, because I'm brave like that. Um, I think I'm, it said white, I'm pretty sure. I don't think it said buttermilk. Yeah, it said white. I'm just putting out some white. All of this takes time. So I could speed that stuff up. Now I'm going to go... Uh-oh, something's out there. It's raining here in New Jersey again. October, well, it's November 1st today. October went out very wet. So I'm just going to... Oh, we're going to go... We want the color to go on the outside. So I think the blue is dry. I'm going to go like that. And just keep turning it around. So I'm just floating a little petal. So it's sheer except for the edges of it. So it's kind of cool. This is a, just another fun thing. I think it's fun. You could base these in if you want to. You don't have to float them. Um, you're just using the tip of your brush really and making that petal shape. It's not hard, but you don't want too much paint on your brush. That's my thing that I do all the time. I overload it. So I've I've actually picked up several of those floats from the runway and not see I just loaded it again. Got a little brighter. And if some of them are a little less bright, I might just pop them up a little. And go over I guess one wasn't bright at all. And I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look like the picture cuz hers look more painted in, but that sure looks cute. I think it does. We could always outline them or just paint them in like whole. You don't have to have them be, uh-oh, uh-oh, only floated. So let me just make sure I'm loaded up right. Had a little too much paint on my brush. Let's go down here. So just a little C-stroke. It's considered a C-stroke-ish. I'm, I'm guessing you guys can see now why painting is my serenity. It takes focus and um, I just don't want to put my hand in the 
dots. Let me move my um to the point where me being a blabbermouth, I can't even talk because I'm so focused on what I'm doing. Um, and that is how my spirit felt good, it felt calm and at peace when I would be in creating my painted projects. So, uh, it is worth it. It's worth the effort. And then you have this cool thing that you created too. Then if you're like me, you fill your house up with everything. <laughs> and I love it. I love seeing everything. Someone actually said that my house was like a hug when you come in. The way it's decorated, it's very um, average. There's nothing fancy or, you know, it's just all my artwork I guess that makes the difference but um, yeah I love that that really made me happy to hear that and that's it you guys let's see what that looks like I think it looks cool um, she definitely has <clears throat> oh there's highlighting on the buttons themselves so I'm going to do that with white as well and then there's little holes for because they are buttons so I don't want to be too bright with this so I'm going to try and really just using the tip edge of the brush just run it along the top of the button and then that inner section okay. then when I'm done it should be a little more uh, shaped and you can go like I said back and forth as much as you want to to get that to uh, look the way you want it to like I might want to go above here again That's the wrong color, but I just thought it would add a little. And I think I will go around them with black. Um, it doesn't really say. It just says to... Uh, where is it? Flip the scallops around the buttons with white and dot under the hat with cad yellow. That's it. The next thing we have is our spider. we got to do our little spider. And here he is. So see, I thought it looked blue. So I painted the little stripes blue without like looking at the directions. But I think they're white and maybe they're shaded or something. But I like him blue. I think he looks cool blue. Um, let's do our spider. And I think he just needs a little shading on his hat. Shading and highlighting on his hat. And then a little face. And he is pretty much done. I'm going to connect them. So I'm going to go into that um, Diops purple, which is the shading color that I'm using for purple. You could probably use soft black or whatever. I'm going to go along the bottom edge. Actually, hmm, yeah, I'm doing that. Because she doesn't, I don't know. Let's see what she has for spider. I should look. And then I'm going to go above the brim right there it's not doing it I think I need to go I'll add a little black or something or a little bit darker color let's see what she says for the spider oh, well first of all she had a stippling the body which I ended up dry brushing him kinda like the face of the cat which I like um, it says paint the white stripes buttermilk shade brown highlight white dot with lamp black so there's little black dots evidently I can't see them the picture is blown up and it's fuzzy but I like him he's cute um, line the mouth and paint the fangs with white paint the hat lavender shade with diops and highlight with baby pink 
and then it has a bow paint the legs alternating with lamp black oh see it does say lamp black and Indian turquoise so what's the paint white stripes I guess the he must have stripes or something I don't see any stripes I don't know I think we're good he looks spidery enough um but yeah they are blue good paint the legs alternating black and turquoise dot the candies all right cool so yeah there's not much to be done I'm gonna paint his little face but I think the highlight might help us a lot with the um, differentiating the um, the hat so let me put a little pink out and try to get that to um, separate these I'm gonna do it so the top here and then definitely uh, the top of the brim but that makes a difference huh now you can tell the difference his little face I'm gonna use a liner my little thin liner brush and white and we're gonna give him a little mouth we're just going to look at the picture because I can kind of see how she did it. She just put big white eyes and fangs, so we're just going to make a mouth. The smile and little fangs. Didn't really need that. Kind of looks like an extra fang. I don't really want that there. Okay, good. I'm sorry. I take so long. And then the eyes are kind of big just like the cats so we'll make two little eyes like that and then I'll dip dot them with black in a minute they're actually bigger than that that's cute I kind of want to make some up uh, make a yellow there's really no yellow anywhere so I'm gonna make like a yellow stripe on his hat make it like a little yellow ribbon you can do whatever you want guys that's it I think he's cute I think that white that I used for his eyes was very um, translucent. I had mixed some water in it. But I'm going to go over, make it a little more opaque. And that's basically it. I could run the I should use black I think I'm gonna use the black because the cat's black and I am gonna outline a few things um, I'm gonna use my paintbrush and because that way I know I'm not gonna smudge anything when I varnish although if you wanted to use a different like a pen or something you just have to spray varnish and then it would set it in and then you could use any kind of varnish you want but let me just do these buttons because they're kind of just going to show you the picture before I they have little dots and they look a little more um, these are just kind of floating 
So I'm just going to kind of skip a line around. I'm not being too perfect. This liner brush is a 18 slash zero. And I think it just means it has a lot fewer bristles so that you can get a much pointier line. This is the uh, Chris Hoy version of one. It says Chris's Epic Liner, Script Liner. And I got it with her other brushes when I took her little ornament classes. Um, and I've liked, I like it. I think it does a good job. It is epic. Should I do the, um, I mean, I kind of want to, but it, it's going to be so much work. You could put a little line under each of these dots, too, to just kind of give them somewhere to sit. I'm going to paint the pumpkin after this. It's a rainy day here. I'm going to paint. Um, and I'm not, I don't know if I should load this whole video. So long. Let's see how that kind of just made them pop a little better. I really want to do something to the hat too. Um, Oh, I'm going to put the little dots for the buttons. I could use I could have used dip dots from my stylus, but I just did this instead. I think he's done. Cuz you could just keep going and going, but I do. I don't know. I think you know what I got to do. I got to go around every one of these stinking petals. Maybe I'll just do it to the left of each one. Like this. And see what that looks like. And then if it needs more, I'll do it on the other side. But I think this is it. I think that's all I needed to do was just get that to show up a little better. So I hope you guys try it. This has um, been a long project, but I just think he's adorable. And um, so I will post the video. Um, I think I'm going to post a video um, just sharing that I painted him. And then if you want to watch and paint along with me, you'll have that video. But you don't have to watch it if you don't want to. Um, one more. And I'm going to varnish him. She has a lot of glitter, but it's also a pillow. And I love, like, on these, we did glitter, too. See, like, the bat is glitter, this bat is glitter, um, and the wing, I mean, the, yeah, the wings are glitter. So I will um, probably add glitter because I have it. It's actually um, a glitter varnish. And... Or you can add stickles, you can use Dimensional Magic, whatever form of bling you want to add. Um, that's on you guys. You can bling it up. I love bling. I tend to add it, especially for these type of holiday projects. It's just too fun. So see, that's all I needed to do. They're popping now. Love it. I'm, I'm going to consider him done. I don't need to do anything else. Let me, that being said, let me just add a tiny bit of a sh, sh uh, cause a shine, actually the hat looks like it's kind of got a shine, but I am just going to go with a dry brush down the, um, middle of the hat. This is a smaller version of the same brush. This is the, uh, quarter inch version of the Lunar Blender. And hopefully,
it'll do what I hope. And I think it did. I think it just brought out a nice little highlight on the hat. I definitely do. Um, so that's it for him. So let's finish our little spider. Um, he just needs, really he just needs an eyeball and he's done. And then the, the two of them are going to get I'm going to hang him from there and I'm going to, I think I'm just going to glue um, a block to the back of him to get him to stand. Just like on the I showed you like on this guy. See? My little buddies. OMG. I'm so happy that we I did this for you guys. He's so cute. It makes me happy. And I'll be back and we're going to do a little pumpkin. This guy. There's no floating. Alright? Thanks for watching.